Uh, I know you wrestle, you do jiu-jitsu, and you're into nutrition. I am, I am. Uh, this Southside crew is affiliated with the group, the Titanic Stone. You're connected also to one of the America's heroes, Muhammad Ali. Oh, yes, yes. My yes. Sister. service to others is the rent we pay here on Earth. And Hard work and also compassion and caring about people. Um, yes, sir. Right, we're in this together. That's yeah. right. <laughs> we got the next mayor in the city, Jerry Joyce here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. The Dean Show. <laughs> This is the Dean Show. 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 Greetings of peace. Welcome to the Dean Show. And I got potentially our future mayor, Jerry Joyce, in the studio. How are you, Mr. Joyce? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Very nice to meet you. How you it's great to be here. How you been? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. We, we were just uh, throwing around a little bit about uh, before we started uh, here because we want to get to know you a little bit. And uh, I know you wrestle, you do jujitsu, and you're into nutrition. I am. I am. Uh, more so now than ever in my life. Uh, fortunately, society, society is much more into nutrition now than uh -huh. it were when we were kids, at least when I was a kid. Um, so I've learned a lot more about it. Um, I need to do better in my own uh, eating habits, but... A lot more knowledge out there, a lot more information out there available to everyone. And I've come to learn just based on um, personal experience how important and how uh, Im impactful nutrition is and what you eat is to just how you feel every day, Absolutely. let alone the, your overall health. Yeah, they say 95% of chronic diseases are related to the health choices, the food choices that we make. I mean, uh, just to get into like say the, you know, cancer, one in two men, one in three women expecting to have cancer. You got chronic health issues through the roof, obesity, 70% uh, of diabetes. Uh, and, it's, right. it's crazy, you know? So it's good to see, you know, because a lot of times you'll see, uh, unfortunately people who are, it says something a lot. We know wrestlers in and of themselves, you know, athletes, especially wrestlers, are, are really hard workers and have really good work ethic. They they definitely do it as, yeah. as most a athletes are. But yeah, uh, so w now when when we get into s someone and you can connect that to let's say someone tomorrow uh, who will be in public office, right? That this also helps to have you know a clear mind, clear thought. You know what I mean? Taking care of themselves. If someone's taking care of their body, taking care of themselves, also this this helps to make a complete uh, holistic human being. I agree with that. I agree yeah. with that. And athletic training and, and all that brings is, uh, is another facet that will be helpful in the mayor's office. Yeah. Let, let, let me, well, let's do a, I want to do a, a reaction video okay. and let you let, get, get your feedback on me. How's that? Great. That's a MAC-10, a semi-automatic weapon originally designed for military use and illegal in Chicago. So why do you need guns with that much firepower? Protection. The danger is out here. Mm -hmm. This Southside crew is affiliated with the group, the Titanic Stones. They cover their faces to conceal their identities. They actually told us they hate guns. We ain't with this gun. I'm just doing it for survival, bro, until I could put my family and myself in a better predicament to where I need to be. Mr. Joyce, what is your reaction when you see something like that? Um, and what have you heard this term used for our wonderful city, Chirac? I have heard yeah. that term. And let's start with my reaction to that. Um, it's on different levels. So to see teenagers or young adults sitting around with automatic weapons um, and masked faces and talking about uh, how they need it for protection um, is disheartening, um, disgusting on some levels, um, abhorrent, not, uh, I don't buy into totally, uh, what the dialogue that was going on there um, but nonetheless obviously they're in a lifestyle that they are at this point committed to which it, it centers around violence um, i don't think protection is um is the only reason they're carrying guns uh in that situation right there i do understand in too many neighborhoods in chicago that guns are carried for protection um, and having overexposure to uh, that and the reasons for that is a very detrimental, very detrimental thing on uh, all Chicagoans, uh, the youth that are exposed to that, and as they grow older, um, it gets to a point where there's unfortunately probably no turning back in too many instances, practically mm -hmm. speaking. Yeah. 
So um, one of the things I want to do is address the, um, not, the not the symptoms, but the causes of uh, what leads to uh, a life of violence and do that in an early age, provide alternative opportunities, alternative pathways, positive experience of positive role models. There's not enough of that going on in our city right now, um, at least not throughout. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and anybody uh, that, that in Chicago or anywhere else is wa rocking around with uh, automatic weapons on the streets of an urban area, there's, there's no excuse for that. That's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. It should not be tolerated. But uh, it's 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 a sad, and that um, term Chirac, that's that's terrible. That's yeah. terrible. No no uh, no Chicagoan should be uh, should be proud of that or happy to repeat it or yeah, accept yeah, yeah. it, and and all the reasons associated with it. And, and mm. that that is so uh, so sad that nationwide we are known that way by yeah. so many people. Whether it's well, well now it. Uh, we're known as either the murder capital or this violent city, um, or now uh, the most corrupt city in America. So mm -hmm. neither of those are titles that Chicagoans want to have or mm -hmm. be associated with. Mm -hmm. And neither of those are things I'm gonna tolerate as mayor. Yeah, I like what you said, going to the root cause, getting down to, you know, because you see, uh, uh, what, what touched me about that is that obviously it's not acceptable, but going towards the root because you have what, what can, can, can we do where you have broken homes, when you have broken homes, broken societies, and, uh, you know, to see where, you know, some programs can be set for those different disenfranchised kids, for the, for the youth, you know, to get them off the street, you know, to, you know, because uh, I heard a statement, I interviewed a former NFL player, and, and he brought this up from one of his friends that you can't uh, beat uh, uh, ignorance out of someone with a stick. You know what I mean? Force is not always, you know, the answer. You know, there's a lot of deep-rooted problems. I like what you said, getting down to, to the root of these issues, right? It's the only way to attack this problem, um, and the evidence is there. I mean, given the history, we're, we're, how far have we gotten dealing with these issues? Yeah. So we need to try different things and need to emphasize things that have been uh, things that are working and are being done right now, but they're not giving the proper resource, yeah. proper um, backing, yeah. proper coordination. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things as mayor that I've been saying I, I would want to do. Um, public safety is my number one issue as a candidate and as mayor, um, because we can get it right on every other level. If we fail on public safety, Chicago doesn't have a future. Yeah. Uh, and public safety has the law enforcement component, but it has so much more too. And that's what we're talking about right now. And that's what I brought that up because it's some, that's one, one of the number one things on the list, right? Uh, tell, tell us um, uh, more about you. You're connected also to one of the America's heroes, Muhammad Ali. Oh, yes, yes. My sister-in-law, Jamila, is uh, Muhammad Ali's daughter. Uh, she's married to my brother, Mike. Um, they have three children, uh, Nadia, Amara, and Jake. Um, they live about a mile from us. We're blessed to have them so close and mm -hmm. in our lives. Uh, Jamila is about, not about, I have to say the nicest person you could ever meet. Um, and that's, that's not an exaggeration. Is anybody who meets her or mm -hmm. knows her is just uh, blown away how nice she is. She's yeah. the most, uh, and I know a lot of nice, compassionate people out uh -huh. there, but she takes the cake. And, yeah. uh, uh, and she's, her twin sister, she's an identical twin. Her sister Rashida yeah. is, uh, is also wonderful and they're identical in so many ways. Um, uh -huh. So yeah, it's uh, it's been a blessing for our family to have them a part of our family. Uh, well, tell us more about this uh, yourself, getting to know you, uh, Mr. Joyce. Uh, for the people out there, you 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 talk about, or uh, it's it's known that you're you're a mentor to kids. You also adopted several kids of your own. Can you tell us about this? Well, my wife and I have four children. My wife Janine. Yeah. We have four children. Um, we d they're adopted from Guatemala. Um, we've had them since they were infants, and we are so blessed to. The, my son Jeremiah is 18, our daughter Karina is 18, our son Christian is 11, our daughter Kaylee is 11. So um, we have a, we're blessed with a beautiful family and wonderful, beautiful children in so many ways. Um, I, I, I was lucky to have a wonderful, I was involved in athletics growing up yeah. um, extensively. Um, and in that, I had a lot of good coaches, um, wonderful people that through their experience, I, I learned um, commitment and hard work and also compassion and caring about people. Um, just following their examples, I know 
coaching and mentoring and things like that take a lot of time and mm -hmm. it takes sacrifices because you're, you're doing that in, in lieu of something else yeah and, and these are people that had their own families too so um, that really uh, I, I really appreciate that it, it hit a chord with me and so I've always had appreciation for coaches and mentors and people that are involved with kids um, always wanted to do get involved in it myself and I, I did do that I I did coach uh, high school football and I coached wrestling and helped start a wrestling program and um, did was involved in, uh, am involved in mentoring and mentorship programs and that is what I would like to bring to uh, the mayor's office as well yes. as we were just talking about mm -hmm. that all ties in um, helping children um, at their most vulnerable at their most impactful and at the most effective point point when you can because as these as things go along uh, problems get harder to solve and get more expensive to solve yeah. so uh, just going back for a minute when when I think about Muhammad Ali I know that over a quarter of a million people were affected by just his charity not only was he a, a hero like for people a legend in the ring but what really impacted people was who he was outside of the ring how he gave back and there's a famous quote of him talking about um, the service, to the rent. Is the rent we pay here. What is it again? The service to others is the rent we pay here on earth. And this is when people are in those positions of authority, of that they're public, they're, that um, they hold mayor, be it president, whatever. They have the biggest responsibility now. They have one of the biggest responsibilities to make these things happen. You know, what is it to you when you hear a quote like that? Coming from, well, I grew up knowing Muhammad Ali as a boxer. Yeah. Quite honestly, it wasn't until later in life that I realized what a, what a humanitarian, what a wonderful, uh, what a great person this was, the greatest. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's apropos. Um, as far as elected officials and people in public office, I do believe that that is a public trust and that is public an trust. awesome, awesome responsibility, an awesome position to, um, first of all, uh, be honored by the election, uh, the trust that people put in you for those who are elected to win election, and then to, to have the responsibility to carry that out, to um, abide by their wishes, to represent them. I, I, I think that is, uh, it's virtually sacred. Mm -hmm. um, I take that very seriously, and um, I hope I am elected, and I would, um, I hope I can live up to the um, representation and wishes of Chicagoans. Where can people now, they just got a little bit of taste about uh, about you, where can people, if they want to learn more about you, and uh, where can they look you up? What, where, where we have a website, yeah. it's jerryjoyce2019.com. Uh, we have uh, seven days to go. Mm -hmm. Elections a week, a week away. Um, it's been a wonderful experience. We're uh, hitting the ground running here into the final week. Feel good about things, but Turnout is uh, is a question in these muni municipal races lately, so uh, I urge um, one everybody to go to our website, and two if you like uh, what we stand for, what I stand for, um, how I want to lead this city, please please express that uh, likeness by coming out to vote. Thank you very much, and hopefully thank, thank you God, so much for having me. This God, is great. I appreciate th it. Thank you so much, and God willing that if you're elected, like we can rem always remember, you know what you were saying that. Uh, being in the service of people and really giving back to make humanity better, to, to do our small, small part to really make a difference while we're on this earth. Right. We're in this together. That's we're right. Difference. Thank you. God bless you. Thank, thank you, you so you much. Thank you, too. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And thank you guys for tuning in to The Dean Show. We'll see you every week. Subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, peace be with you. Peace be with you.